Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, practice. We talking about practice, not the game now. We talking about practice. A couple of observations. Just finished watching practice on NFL Network and piecing together what we can from uh, Twitter and things. It's not the same as actually being out there. I believe West Coast Cowboys was actually out their streaming practice and things um but what we actually got a couple of things that are key here is first of all cd lamb has some kind of a foot injury um i don't have exactly what knowledge there is. there's no walking boot we don't know if it's an ankle somebody had said in the live stream and i don't don't quote me on this but they said that he had a cut on his foot that needed a stitch i don't know if that's the case or not uh, does not seem to be like anything serious because he was on the sidelines, uh, you know, in uh, jersey and sweatshirt and stuff and signing autographs and things. So I think it's a minor situation. Uh, good news is Tyron Smith and Will Greer were definitely both back out on the field practicing today. And in fact, um, I said, heard that Tyron Smith was holding his own against Khalil Mack. So that's truly some real. Um, challenges that are going on there. Um, as far as the difference between this practice versus, say, Denver's practice, Denver's practice, things kind of got heated and chippy. This actually seemed like two teams that were actually trying to get some real work and stuff done. Um, as far as the broadcast is going, they definitely showed Justin Herbert a lot more than they did Dak Prescott and things, in which case Justin Herbert had uh, an interception followed by three incompletions and things before he ended up Writing the ship, I think Dak may have had one deep pass that was, <coughs> excuse me, an interception down in there. But for the most part, Dak, <coughs> excuse me, looked completely sharp. This, um, the interesting thing here is what I think you're seeing is the evolution of preseason. Coaches are now looking at these joint workouts more like preseason games and actually really getting in work for their first team and second team um, because it can be more scripted. Um, we're going to listen to uh, Mike McCarthy here in a moment. He's going to be talking about how they're scripting uh, like 74 plays uh, each of the two days for working out. And this is actually going to be able to get you more and more ready than per se than just a preseason game. And this may be what you see. It may be in the future we start looking at maybe two or one preseason games and more joint practices between teams. I don't know which works better. I mean, it's still something that's relatively new. Now, as far as our defense goes, our defense, we finally got um, Anthony Barr, Cat Boy. I'm sorry, Cone Boy. I know you'll be happy to know that Anthony Barr was out there um, for the first time getting some action. Uh, the defense was definitely chippy. We ended up um, actually seeing the defense making a lot more plays. Um, Dante Fowler had a sack. Um, I know we had some tip balls. I think we had a couple of interceptions. The defense definitely seems like they are very, very active. Zeke Elliott. You know, I, I'm getting tired of people talking about Zeke Elliott is done. I want you to understand something. As bad as people say Zeke Elliott's season was, you do realize that he was only one of seven running backs that rushed for 1,000 yards last year. You realize that, right? And when you start thinking about people talking about, oh, man, Antonio Gibson, he's a better back than, Dak, than Zeke Elliott. He actually averaged a tenth of a yard less per carry than Zeke Elliott did on a bad year where he had a tour PCL. And Antonio Gibson is a guy who is fumbling itis. People will say, oh, Alvin Kamara. You know, this is a case of perception versus reality because Alvin Kamara is averaging a half yard less than Zeke did last year. He only averaged 3.8 yards a carry. So I think it's a little bit overblown that Zeke Elliott is done. And I dare say that looking at Zeke right now, I'm not going to say he's as explosive as he was in 2016, but he looks good. He is moving well. He is cutting very, very well. And he's got a bit of a pop. And I tell you what, you get on the other side. You get into that hole when he's coming through, and you tell me that he's done. It goes back to the narrative that they play on TV because they keep trying to tell you that, you know, he's only averaged 53 yards a carry. I mean, like 53 yards a game. But you have to also understand that the Cowboys' offense has evolved into a more passing 
offense, and he's also been splitting time with Tony Pollard. He's no longer carrying the ball 23 times a game. He's got about 10 yet less carries. He averaged only 13 and a half carries per game last year, which is the reason why those numbers went so far downhill. But let's listen to Mike McCarthy uh, at the presser here on uh, what they hope to accomplish. While we're scheduled for approximately 74, you know, you got to estimate on the two-minute two drills, which you're hoping to get seven plays apiece. So uh, we're pretty much scheduled for 74 both days. So it's going to be great work. Um, yeah. Let's see both those guys going. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's going to go to that. Well, definitely. I mean, just count the snaps. You know, just once again, you know, you're looking at 148 snaps over the next two days. So, uh, that, that, you know, that's, that's it's like two games. Now. So it's it's great work. Obviously, this is a great environment. Uh, I had a chance to walk the field last night, so we're excited to work to work with Brandon and his football team. I would just say the core of the decision is it goes back to risk assessment. And, and once again, I, I think when you have, you know, two football clubs that, that want to work together and have the same goals of what you're trying to get out of the practices, um, and, that, that, and that's what that's why we're here. So I mean, they, they obviously are, are going down the same path as us as, as far as how they want to approach this week leading up to the game. And uh, once again, we're excited to work today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we, we want to be physical and finish and so forth. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we, you know, we, we don't want any fights or things like that. But, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is the, is, the, is the get back, keep the tempo up, you know, because all that does is it disrupts the flow of practice tempo because pace of operation and oops, excuse me, compete against. Can I use my hands? Or what? Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, pace of operation and tempo is a big part of, uh, um, of how you practice. So. Um, and, that, and that's, you know, it's just, just, it's very disruptive and there's nothing good that comes out of it. Yeah, Will's scheduled to go today, yes. Uh, slightly. He'll do the individual, then we're going we're gonna to give him a little bit today and then reassess tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, tack, tackling is a fundamental, just like everything else. And, you know, there's components to it. And, you know, there's always a teaching progression to, to, to all the fundamentals. So, you know, when you, get, when you break it down to the, you know, the approach, the footwork, the long stride, short stride. So those are things we work on every day. Uh, so, uh, but once again, I think the reason why you do or you don't practice, it just all falls under that, you know, the umbrella of risk assessment and, and player safety. I think Zeke's had an excellent camp. He's uh, definitely all right. season number one leading into camp. I mean, he's he's fully healthy. You know, he, he's looked good. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, there's there's, there's going to be some great work, matchups today all the way through. So we're looking forward. I know Mike is looking forward to it too. So uh, this this is this is, this will be a great work for us. Evaluation number one, but uh, just kidding, Michael. But uh, no, I, I think he's having a, a really good camp. I, I think really, you know, if you just look the way camp goes, you know, you got these these ramp up practices and and so forth. And, 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 and frankly, the run blocking units is a little bit of a disadvantage in those first four weeks. But I think now, as you see the offensive line and the run blocking unit come together, he's getting some cleaner looks, and, and I think that's that's probably part of it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Mike is having an, an, an excellent camp. Um, you know, he's uh, trying to go back through the practice. I don't think there's been a practice that he hasn't made, you know, splash play or been productive. So, you know, I think just the biggest thing is the, you know, as a defense is the connection with with the others, and um, and he looks a lot more comfortable, you know, conceptually on, on what we're asking him to do. And you know, once again, being flexible to create those those targeting issues that he cha it's a big challenge for an offense. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, you got to remember my exposure. I mean, obviously, I know the, the type of year he, he, he had before before I arrived here. But you know, he obviously, then he was coming off an injury season, and you know, and, and that, that that there's always a you know process that that players go through with that. But you know, I, I think clearly, uh, I, I think Layton's Layton, Layton's in great shape. I think he's past the injuries, and um, you know, he, he's in a great groove right now. Uh, he's playing mm-hmm. a lot of confidence, and I think he's you know we haven't played a game yet, but I think he's you know, poised to, to have a great year. Well, I mean, linebacker and edge spot, that, that'll be primarily where he works. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> oh, shoot, it's going to be great work, yeah. I mean, uh, so impressed with Justin. I mean, frankly, last year when we played him, you know, I think it's like any any player in this league, you know, you watch him on tape and, and you know, because when you watch tape, there's no emotion. You, you know, you don't, you don't really feel the energy, you know, that, that's out there. And, um, and I, w- I was just so impressed with him in our game last year. So he's a, not, not only a tremendous talent, but I, I think he's, you know, just the way he plays, you know, he plays with a lot of juice, a lot of energy, both in the pocket and out of the pocket. And obviously he can make any throw on the board. Just the last one. You're talking about 11 or 12 personnel, man. <laughs> That's the inside joke. He usually asks that. Uh, yeah, we know. <laughs> um, you're enjoying practice. Can you show a little bit more? You talking about today? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't think we're, you know, we're not, we're not trying to win the skiing game today. To be honest, we, we just want to line up and, you know, hopefully, you know, we're not playing uphill schematically. Uh, we, 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 we want the competition and the fundamental work. That's right. We're not trying to show a whole lot right now. All right. So we've got our notes for today from practice. Tomorrow they'll be running it back again. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys being here and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. We'll keep you up to speed with any other news that is. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon.